Wow. Wow. I am completely speechless at that game. The Flyers beat the Boston Bruins coming back down from 5-2 to two to win in a shootout by a score of 6-5. to five. Travis Sanheim with two goals. Sean Couturier, three points. David Krejci for the Bruins had two goals. The ending to that shootout was nothing you see every day. It was completely bizarre the way that shootout ended, and I'll get to that in a moment. So, j- just this entire game in general, that was a well-deserved win by the Flyers. They fought back. They kept up with the Boston Bruins after everything that was going completely wrong for them early in this game. They go down 2 nothing. They got a power play goal in the first period by Kevin Hayes. And then just back and forth goals in the second period, but they still manage to keep it a 5-4 to four game coming out of 2. And the third period, it's just basically them trying to tie the game, and they managed to do that on a 4-on-4. Four four. A well-deserved victory after, like I said, everything was just completely going down for them. C- completely just looking like it was going to go wrong. And that started off, like I said, two early goals by the Boston Bruins. It's Bjork and Krejci on a power play, making it 2 nothing. Bjork was off of a terrible turnover by Phil Myers. It was just bad. Bjork takes it right there and completely undresses Myers and Carter Hart. Carter Hart just got completely fooled on what Bjork was doing, and he was able to bury it into the open and net. one nothing Bruins. And then David Krejci on the power play. The Flyers were actually doing good on this penalty kill. It was just a big rush by the Bruins. They just got there on an odd man rush, and Krejci was just there to bang the puck home. Bing, bang, boom. It's 2 nothing Boston. But then... Going towards the end of this period, the Flyers do get on a power play. And take note, the Flyers' power play has been very, way to put this, bad for a while. I think they're five for their last 33. Their, the last time the Flyers scored on the power play was when they played Vegas. And I think at the beginning of the month. So, yeah, it's it's been a while since the Flyers scored on the power play. And they've been going through different line combos, different ways to set things up. I think today the, the lines were... Drew, it was Drew Hayes connecting on the first line. Then you had Raffle, Couturier, Voracek on the second line. Then it was JVR, Law, and Pitlick. And then on the fourth line, you have Farabee, Bunneman, who was just recently called up as K- Kasha gets sent down. It's just... Okay. Just trying... I guess you're just trying to spark things at this point. So the offense, yes, has been sluggish as of late. So I, w- I don't understand... Not that I don't understand. I don't I don't blame Elaine Vigneault for mixing up the lines a little bit just to get something to spark up. And they do the same thing on the power play, and it's Travis Konechny. We actually score on this power play, so it's Travis Konechny from the point passing it over to Kevin Hayes, who one times it passed Yaroslav Halak, and with a 2-1 Boston lead going after two. Well, after one, actually. And then the second period, it's just goals, goals, goals. Early on, it's David Pasternak from a nice feed from Brad Marsh and just goes a little breakaway. Five-hole pass Carter Hart, 3-1 Boston. And then not that much later, literally like, I would say a little over 40 seconds later, Travis Sanheim claps one, that doesn't clap one, he takes a wrist shot from the point, past Jaroslav Alak, 2-3-2 two, two Boston. And then a little over three minutes later, it's Charlie Coyle making it a 4-2 Boston lead. And then David Krejci gets his second of the game a little bit later on, three minutes later, I would say, making a 5-2 Boston. And then that's when you hear the Boo Birds a little bit from the Flyers fans, the Flyers faithful. The Wells Fargo Center was, it was, it was energetic today because rival, it's Boston. What do you expect between a little Philadelphia and Boston rivalry right there? The Wells Fargo Center is going to be a little packed. And then you also got the Boston fans that are spread out through the arena cheering on their fans, so eh, get a little energy right there out of both crowds, but the Flyers fans are bringing down the Boo Birds a little bit, but then the Flyers, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, I would say, a, I wouldn't say sloppy, maybe not a fluky goal, but it's Jake Voracek coming on a rush, gives it over to Sean Couturier, and he's just driving the net, and he doesn't decide to shoot, he decides, like I said, to drive the net, and Halak just does an insane split, and Couturier just puts it right through his five hole, and it's five, it's five three Boston at this point. And then the Flyers, a little bit, not even that long later, this is when the Flyers are starting to rally once again. And it's the fourth line, and it's Mark Friedman from the point taking a shot, 
it goes off of Connor Bunneman, then one of the Boston defenders, and pass to Lack. And that's Bunneman's first goal in the National Hockey League, so congratulations to him. And it is a 5-4 Boston lead going into the third period. So we go in to that third period, and the Flyers are pushing. The Flyers, I would say, I would say through the first for the first 10 to 15 minutes, they controlled the period. And then we go around a little over halfway into this period. The Flyers are getting chances through this point. Then we get in the halfway, and it's Joel Farabee and Tor- Tory Krug taking two roughing penalties, which makes it a 4-on-4. Four four. And on this 4-on-4, four four, Phil Myers and Travis Sanheim go to work. They've been having, even though Sanheim scored earlier in this game, that that pairing has been struggling as of late. They've been turning the puck over a lot, especially in their own defensive zone. But on this 4-on-4, four four, they go to work offensively. Basically basically a two-man show at this point on the 4-on-4. Four four. So you get Phil Myers driving the zone. Sandheim, the same thing as well. Sandheim gets it on the net, but then he has to wrap it around. Goes off of a lack. You also got Katuri in front trying to dram it home. But the puck bounces behind Katuri, and Sandheim is there in the slot to bury it past Yarzov a lack for a 5-5 game in the third period. And the Flyers still continue to get their chances, but Boston decides to wake up a little bit. They're starting to get the shots on Carter Hart after really not having much many chances early on in the third period. They started to pile on. They decided to wake up a little bit late, but both goaltenders managed to keep the keep the uh, keep the pucks at bay at this point. So we go into overtime, and overtime just the Flyers had their chances. Boston had their chances. Boston had some control early on. The Flyers had a, a little, I would say, breakaways. They had a sort of somewhat odd man rushes going the other way. That didn't really turn into anything. Travis Konechny had a chance. Jake Voracek had some chances. Sean Couturier insanely late into the period. I think Ivan Provorov. It was Sean Couturier driving with like five seconds left. Drives the net. He gets the puck on yards off a of lag and somehow manages to get it over to the left side where Provorov is there. And somehow this puck does not go in. I think Halak gets a little bit of a piece of it. And it goes above the net, off the net, and, and overtime ends at this point. So we go to a shootout. Five rounds, nothing. Halak makes some saves. Hart makes some saves. Basically, both teams that haven't really been that good at the shootout this, this season, the Flyers have been more in a favor in shootouts rather than Boston. I think Boston going into this was 0, 0 for 6 in the shootout this season, the record-wise. So... Hayes misses, Pasternak misses, Drew almost beats Halak. He beats Halak, but he doesn't beat the post. Charlie Coyle misses, Sean Couturier misses, DeBrus misses, Farabee, I had no idea what he was doing on his, he misses, Krejci misses, and then you get Travis Connecting in the fifth round coming up, the all-star guy. He comes in, puts a top cheese pass to Lack. it's one nothing Flyers in the shootout. And here comes the interesting part with this shootout, the way it ended. So you get Brad Marchand, the rat, and you want to know what happens. He's getting ready to set up. He's coming with speed. He's coming with speed, getting ready to score. But, oh, wait, he forgot the puck at center ice. <laughs> that's just that's just so odd. The way it, he misses the puck at center ice. He's going in with speed, and he just, he just completely skates over it. He, like, touches it a little bit, but he completely skates over the entire puck. And the refs had their little discussion for a little bit as the Flyers are coming off the bench ready to celebrate the win. Like, hey, we won. He missed the puck. And you got literally everyone in the, fan, everyone in the crowd saying, he missed the puck. He can't go back. That's game over. And it was game over. The refs decided that Brad Marchand, that was his shot. And it was no go. Completely overskate the puck. And the Flyers win this game in a shootout by a score of 6-5. to five. Ooh, that, that Flyers, after that beginning of the game, I would say that this, they deserve that win. They completely deserve that win 100%. They battled back being down 5-2. to two. They scored those goals. They rallied late in that second period to make it a 5-4 game. And they took control of the third period. And thank, honestly, thank God they won this game. Because a lot of the fans in that crowd were just pissed at that point. Raining the Boobirds down. So the Flyers, they find their way to come back and win this game they get the two points that they needed because coming into this game the Flyers were out of a wild card spot so with this win I think they would move back into that second wild card spot don't don't quote me on that yet because I'm not too sure but I would assume 
they move back into that second wild card spot. I think they're fighting back and forth between Florida at this point. So, with this, like I said, with the win, they possibly move back into that wild card spot. And then the Flyers, the the toughness just starts from here from Boston. Wednesday, Wednesday at eight o'clock, they go they go over and play the St. Louis Blues, the defending Stanley Cup champions, on their home ice. Yeah, the Blues are no joke. They're one of the best teams in the NHL. You you like you had that division of the good the the elite teams to the good teams. The Blues are one of those elite Stanley Cup contender teams. They have been really good this season. You got you got guys like Vladimir, even though Tarasenko has been injured most of the season. You got Alex Petrangelo, Braden Shen's been playing good, Jaden Schwartz, and Jordan Binnington. Jordan Binnington has been is no joke. That team entirely is no joke. The Flyers have been borderline a bad team on the road, so they got to be prepared going to that game. Who knows? Who knows who's going to start in net? Because both goaltenders, I would say Elliott has a better a better record and better numbers than Hart on the road. Both both goaltenders have been equally as bad, but I think Elliott has had more of the games where he stole the game for the Flyers on the road. So in my opinion, I would expect Brian Elliott to start the game on Wednesday, and then Hart to start the game on the back-to-back Thursday back at home against the Montreal Canadiens. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough week for the Flyers. And they started it off right with a shootout win over the Boston Bruins by a score of 5-6. to six. Get those two points because this point of the season, you gotta get you got to get points. Basically what it is. You have to get points, whether overtime, but the two points are honestly, that's the way, you gotta get two points. You just gotta get the points to move up into those standings. Just like I said, this road trip, well not road trip, this this stretch, this week could be tough. St. Louis, Montreal, and then you get LA, who honestly is is a terrible team, but the Flyers did lose to them this season over during the Christmas break, so yeah, it's gonna be a tough stretch for the Flyers. They gotta get some points this week, and yeah, they do it today. So, what are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on the comeback win by the Flyers? What are your thoughts on the Flyers just not giving up? What are your thoughts on Brad Marchand's uh, miss puck in the overtime? How do you think of that overskating the puck? Hmm? <laughs> it's just when I think about that, I, it always comes back to me that the one quote that Travis Konecki said during the stadium series last season. It was when he was talking to one of the Penguins players, he would just say, Karma's a bitch, eh? <laughs> just, Eat it up, bud. Eat it up. Karma's a fucking bitch, eh? Uh, it has no ties into this whatsoever. I just, it, I just think of that for some reason. I just do. So, don't forget to leave, don't forget to drop a comment. Don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one.